Welcome to the Spurs 9501 podcast. From Kane to the lane, the final say on all things Tottenham. Here are your hosts, Steve, Ray, Cam and Jam. Everybody, welcome back to the Spurs 9501 podcast. I've got Steve in London, Jam in Connecticut and Cam in Florida. This is Ray in London. We're having a special podcast today where we're going to go, th- each member of the team is going to go through their their dream team for next year, for next season. So everybody's going to go through they're going to, and they're going to talk about why they want this specific player. So um, let's go straight into it with Cam's. Thanks for inviting me back, Ray. It's great to be back here today, and it's great to have uh, uh, this opportunity to discuss what we, uh, Spurs fans, would love to see as a team for 2021-22 that can realistically win the Premier League. That is what was the, the task you set us, and so this is a team, bearing in mind that we have some uh, um, financial constraints that I think may be realistic in terms of getting, maybe not, like to hear your views. So starting off in goal, clearly it's time to say goodbye to Lloris, thank you for your service, etc., etc. I think probably one of the brightest and upcoming uh, um, goalkeepers we have at Burnley, Nick Pope, fantastic, probably one of the best save ratios this season, could definitely bring something to the team and freshen it up. Also a young um, uh, goalkeeper. At the back, I've gone with um, another very, very exciting player, probably one of the the best uh, uh, right backs yeah. at this moment in uh, Europe, Ashraf Hakimi. Everyone's been raving about him, bombs forward, great putting in crosses, good defensively, just what we need. And obviously at the centre back, the two two players I think that are going to make have still got a lot to offer. Toby, solid reliability, we need the experience, we need someone who's got a level ahead, but also those years of experience that he's got. And just watching him yesterday against um, Wales and Belgium, I mean, you know, uh, him and uh, um, Vertonghen again back together, they just look, they look fantastic. Um, I think it's time to give Rodon a go. I think he did very well against Belgium too yesterday. Unlucky about the, he wasn't responsible for any of the goals, I don't believe, but he, um, it's time for him to step up. At, right, at left back, no doubt in my mind that that regular is only going to get better and better. If we can, I'm assuming here we're going to hold on to him and Madrid won't come in, and we need that. Midfield, I'm going to go with the defensive midfield. Hoybier, I think, will get better. I think we've overworked him this year, but he needs somebody who can really work with. And indeed, he's the guy who works as hard as as Hoybier. Um, he's not he's not he's not weak like some of the others that we've got. Whether it's uh, Winks, whether it's uh, Sissoko, or even Ndombele in that role, we need a hard man that matches Hoybier for uh, um, minute by minute. And up front, I'm going for the dream three: Grealish, Diavala, uh, Son. Three behind, obviously, I don't believe we can win the Premiership without Harry Kane. Everyone says Kane's going to leave, but if we're going to talk about a team that's going to win the Premiership, you need one of the world's greatest strikers. As you look at any list, um, behind Lewandowski, Kane is number two striker on the planet. That's my team. Okay, excellent. Um, Any questions? I want Jam and Steve, have you got any questions or comments about uh, Cam's team? I, I do. I definitely say that, that that is a team that could potentially win the league, whether that's a realistic team, which is what I thought the goal was here today. Realistic. Um, you know, I don't see us getting greatish unless we, we buy nobody else. And, and even then we're spending what's over 60, 70 million for him. Um, I'm not sure how long he's got left on his contract, but he's going to be an expensive player, especially being an English, you know, superstar. Uh, Diabala, he's 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 up for debate, and I could see him getting being bought for like a cut rate price at about a twenty thirty million, which is a cut rate price for him because I know Juventus are looking you know in other directions. Um, indeed, he's a fantastic player. Would love to have him. Um, Ashram uh, Hakimi, that's an excellent choice too. Uh, Dortmund have been known to let some of their higher prospects go for decent wages, especially just you know they they seem to want to keep producing and finding the next best thing. So that's a, that's a good potential buy. Uh, and as far as Pope goes, I like Pope. I do see him potentially being our next number one, but I think I think Lloris could still have something to offer. And the reason you'll see when my team comes up, I, cho- I chose to stick with Lloris was because I don't feel like that many sign-ins are possible right now. Okay, Cam, excellent. Steve, did you have any comments about Cam's dream team? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's very good. It's very uh, aspirational. Um, 
just coming briefly on to Jack Grealish, I, I'm, even if we had the money and he wanted to come, I think we wouldn't get him. I think others would make, make sure we didn't. He would be taken by um, our rivals because we, they've got the financial clout to do that. Uh, I don't think we get him, unfortunately. But uh, certainly, Kamal, Kamal, I think it's great that you you have that dream. Um, yeah. The rest of it, I think, is is pretty solid. Um, not sure about Joe Rodon, and I think we we have to maybe be realistic about Harry and um, Son staying. So we probably need to think about um, replacements for those as well. But the rest of it, it's very solid, um, if a little bit aspirational. Okay, excellent. Thanks very much for that, Steve. Good comments there. In terms of my comments, uh, I really like the look of this team. Oh, as, uh, going back to Steve, it's aspirational. A couple of questions I have. Now, Nick Pope, is he one for the future? He's 30 years old already. You know, he's a good shot stopper, but I'm not sure if he's going to be an elite keeper that we'll need. So that's a little question mark for me. But obviously, I still think he's an upgrade on Lloris. Mm -hmm. Toby, I think, great player. But again, I don't know if he can play 50, 60 games a season. Is he going to be a starter? He's pretty slow now. He's lost a lot of pace, any pace that he had. Joe Rodon is still wet behind the ears, not really a Premier League player yet. He's had a few games. He's definitely going to be a great player but I don't think he's there yet. So whether these would be your starting centre-backs, I don't know, it's up for discussion. The rest of the team is amazing. I mean, Grealish and Dybala, that's like a dream team. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. If we could get those, I don't think anybody could stop us winning the league. But I, I, feel like I really like this team. Little question marks here and there, but I think it's a great team. Uh, you know, we can only dream that it would ever happen. But Hakimi is a good shout at right back. There's also Yusuf Atal at Lyon, I think is a good right back as well. But no, that's a really good back line, I think. Can I just add my point? So the, so the thinking behind this is that we sell Ndombele, we sell Delhi, and uh, we sell Stephen Bergwijn. Uh, we keep Mora, obviously, you know, can easily fit in into those positions. And uh, we keep Lo Celso. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, but we get rid of some of that dead wood. Now, I don't know what we're going to get for Ndombele, but he's probably our biggest bet in terms of bringing good money in. And uh, Delhi, if we can get something for him uh, and uh, Bergwijn, maybe... Might not be able to buy them all, but I'm sure I could go away to, to bring in some some of the new blood that we need. What about Eric Lamella? What are you doing with Eric Lamella? I think Lamella is going to have to be a squad player because I think that with his injuries and his level, I'm not sure what he's worth or what his value is. But if we could, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd probably want to keep him uh, because I, I think, you know, with all the games that a team plays nowadays, you need a player like Lamella. And Musa Sissoko? Take what you can and run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one thing that comes to mind, just to finish up on Cam's dream team, if Wilfred Ndidi is aspirational, potentially we can't get Wilfred Ndidi. I think a good second choice will be Yves Basuma from Brighton. I think he's a really good player. He's yeah, he's come up a lot now, and he would be a good option for us if we can get him instead of, you know, if they don't want to sell Ndidi. But that's just my thoughts. So, excellent, Cam. Thank you very much for that. You put a lot of work Thank in. It. Really good. Um, let's move on to Steve now. Okay. Um, I, I've... I've tried to be, I think, perhaps a little bit more realistic um, than Kamal. OK. I, I'm not sure this team would, would win the league, but I think it would be up there um, or thereabouts. Um, Nick Pope, I hadn't realised how old he was. I thought he was about 12. I had, um, <laughs> had years in front of him. What he is, is uh, he's, he's like many keepers. He's a very good shot stopper. And, of course, he gets a lot of practice with Burnley. Um, yeah. What he probably isn't as good at is dominating his area. However, does Lloris do that? No, he doesn't. So that's why I went with Pope. I thought he's um, he's still got five years in him, I would say, even at that age, Ray. So, um, yeah, Next I went Steve, with Pope. Quick question for you. I know we all know, I think it's a fact now, that Lloris's distribution is appalling, probably one of oh. the worst in the Premier League. What's Nick Pope's distribution? Is he able to play it out or is he just humping it downfield all the time? That's well, he does hump it downfield, but I think he's also got the ability to distribute. It's, this okay. is all about timing and sure. doing things quickly. And, yeah. of course, your defenders need to be ready as well. Okay. And if we can avoid having that blue hand raised to stop the game in its tracks, which Larice does pretty well all the time, I'd just love that. OK, excellent. Let's go to your right back now. Well, this is Lamp T from Brighton. Um, I'm going back to when we played Brighton. I think we lost 3-0, something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And he was outstanding. He was certainly the man of the match, I think, during the first half. He's quick. His positional sense is good. Uh, he can defend and he can attack. 
uh, a great little player, and I think we would really do well to get hold of him. Do you, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, feel free, Cam and Jam, to chime in here. But his height is not the tallest of fullbacks. Could that be a weakness if people playing balls down, high balls towards him and setting? What do you think? Um, well, I mean, I'd say that's not his main role, but um, okay. I know what you mean. Yeah. Okay. All right. No worries. No worries. Okay. Let's. Sorry, I didn't want to stop you. Let's go through this. So, well, you send the backs. Well, this is interesting uh, because I think Tanganga is a centre half. Just from what I've seen, you know, watch this space. Um, either I'll be proved right, uh, or of course I'll be horrifically embarrassed over the next two or three years. But I mean, I don't even mention his name really. But if you remember Sol Campbell, he started off at left back, and he went away one summer and became a heavyweight boxer. And we put him into a centre half, and he dominated and um, you know controlled our defence. I think this he's got, I would say, even more potential than that. He's quick. He's um, calm and he can distribute the ball so i'm really i think he, he should be playing at center a set one of our center backs and up against toby with his experience he can sort of mentor him through that process um i know you've talked about rodon i think rodon i wait to see the potential i haven't seen the potential in rodon that i have in jaffet hmm. i just want to add i mean i would have chosen jaffet or rodon but i just went with rodon because we have paid 11 million for him but i would always see a role for jaffet tanger tanganga in our team as as for the future just a quick question steve what do you see the future of uh, davinson sanchez uh, get rid of or is back up hmm. well i mean i think he could be either really i think he's okay for backup maybe you know europa league the uh, league cup that sort of thing but i just think he's he's too accident prone yeah, yeah. You're okay. trying. You're trying to provoke me, aren't you, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> I would perish the thought. I would never do that. Uh, I know how to um, hit your raw points. I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think he should go go on holiday with Aurea, and they can, um, you know, yeah. drop their glasses and I don't know, cause havoc in restaurants from somewhere else. I don't know. Yep. And yep. Wrigley, on who you put up there, I think you know Kamal's covered that. I, I suspect we're all pretty well agreed that. Um, he has great potential. Uh, I sometimes think he's better going forward than he is defending, but he gets out of trouble because of his pace. Um, and hopefully over the years, he would become more experienced in terms of his positional play. So I've kept him in there at uh, our left back. Just a quick question, Steve. Uh, let's uh, perish the thought and, you know, worst case scenario, Madrid exercise their buyback clause and they want him back. What other left back would you have in there? We have oh, blimey. Well, I mean, Ben Davies has got another 20 years in him, surely. <laughs> in the um, championship, hopefully, but, not with us. But we have Sessegnon. Oh, hold on a second, Jan. Yeah, this is, a, this yeah, is Steve. Yeah, no, team. I, I must admit, because I saw that as a given, I haven't done a great deal of research on it. OK, no worries. Uh, just yeah, a question. Yeah, That's yeah. All. Yeah, no, you're quite right. I hope you're right anyway that he stays, but, you know. Yeah. OK, let's go to your midfield now. Well, I've kept Hoybier as a sort of holding midfield player. Yep. Um, even though I've been disappointed with him in the last few games. Uh, I think, as someone mentioned earlier, he's been overplayed. Uh, but I think with support, he can do that. Uh, in terms of the others, um, Tielemann has been playing extraordinarily well. I saw him against uh, Man United in the FA Cup, and he was just a cut above everyone. Yeah. Uh, and he's a box-to-box -box player, and he can score as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the players, the, the player we need, we need sort of er Ericsson who can still be Ericsson. And I'm trying to be realistic about a midfield playmaker because it's hard to get a midfield playmaker. If, you know, we, we're not going to be able to get De Bruyne. We know that. So I've looked at um, Click, who plays uh, for Leeds, um, and he's been there mm. quite a while. However, I think he's um, he's got a good pass. He doesn't score as many goals as he should do, but he gets into positions to score. And his assists, he does a lot of assists. So it's a bit sort of out there. Um, but I think he would be in our um, in our sort of pay scale, as it were. We could we could realistically get him. I don't think we can realistically get Grealish. Okay, and you wouldn't keep Ndombele then? I think Ndombele has been a real disappointment. You know, we we had this discussion at the last time we we um, we did yeah. a podcast, didn't we? About yeah. compare yeah. him. How many Grealishes could we have got for um, one Ndombele? Yeah. He's got yeah. potential, but. You know, he's got potential for a, like a Deli Alley player who you pay Milton Keynes five million for, not 62. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, let's go yeah. to your forward line. 
Well, no I mean, I, I, I started off this process by putting in the Spurs player I, I would keep. And the Spurs players I put in were Son, Kane, Mora and Reglion. I hadn't put Holberg in, but I, I thought, no, we need to give him a chance. Mora, for that work rate, I love the work rate. You know that he helped us win at the weekend. Um, I have my doubts about Kane and Son staying, realistically. Yeah. And I have got some options for that. Um, but if they don't stay, then the other two players I looked at were Ings, who we've been in, um, we've been linked to before as backup. Yep. Uh, and Calvert Lewin from Everton. I think yep. those are two players that maybe realistically we could we could go for. Although Everton are, um, they would probably see us on the on the same level as them now and wouldn't necessarily want to sell. But um, hopefully we can keep Kane and we can keep Son. If not, I put in Ings and Lewin there. Although I think Ings is getting on a bit and he's had two um, cruciate ligament knees done. But when I've seen him play, you wouldn't know it. He throws himself around um, and technically very gifted. And Calvert-Lewin, still a bit raw, but he gets into those scoring positions. And I, I think they would make good replacements for Kane and Son if need be. OK, great. Um, Cam, Jam, any thoughts on Steve's uh, team? Any questions? Oh, yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the main thing I would say for, on Steve's good team, well put together. Um, I think the only issue for us will really here is, uh, and, and I, I challenge Steve on this, is this a team to win the Premier League? I mean, it looks very much like a couple of changes here and there. Um, <coughs> not enough for me to say that we could win the Premier League with it. Okay, we're top four at least, do you think, Cam? Potentially. I mean, I think that I'm going to come back to, to something that Steve did say and that we haven't discussed is a lot of what we're doing here is predicated on the fact that the players that we don't like, we sell. I mean, one of the things that we've all moved on here from here and which brought about today was the fact that Bale already made it clear he's leaving at the end of the season. That saves $200,000 or more um, a week for Tottenham which I think every penny should go into Grealish's back pocket if that means that we get him. And it's, it, how about we do an exchange with Villa for Ndombele for Grealish? Mm, mm. They, they, also wouldn't, on, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. <laughs> and Ndombele is also on 250,000, same as Kane. Yep. Good Lord. Anyway, let's move on now to uh, Jan. He needs to be here, factored think, in. Uh, yeah. Tillman would be a good sign, and he's an excellent player too. And Lamptey, I put also on my team, and and I think those would be two massive instant improvements. Other than that, I think you were very tame, um, Steve. I think we could have we we could be a lot more expressive, especially considering you know, if we were to sell Kane and Son, those two players alone, that's that, that revenue that would bring is, is insane. That would be a lot of money to reinvest into the team. And I think we could do a lot better than Danny Ings. Danny Ings and and mm. I mean, like I like Ward Press. I actually put him in my team. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I think our improvements from uh, well, not improvements because it it's hard to improve from those two players. But I, I think we'd have an equivalent exchange at least. Shall we go into your team now, Jim? I'd love to. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, in goal, I, I decided to stick with Loris. Um, I, I feel like it is time to move on, move forward from Loris. But he's uh, been doing so well. He's not so well he's been he's probably a player that next needs to go the following season after that but for now i wanted to spend money elsewhere uh Lamptey, i think he's a fantastic player every time i watch brighton he's he's one of the more exciting um options that they have going forward i don't know if he's a, a jose type player but he could be he's young works hard um in midfield i went with um so Toby and Skriniar, I th I feel like if we have one big sign in this season, it needs to be in uh, as a centre back. It's like it has to be done. We need a real solid centre back alongside Toby, not someone who's gonna become a good centre back one day potentially. Um, and then Reggie, of course, he's if we he's our player currently. So let's not say Real Madrid are gonna come get him, which you know they might maybe, but I don't think they need him right now. Um, they got a whole rebuild they have to work on themselves. Uh, so let, let's hope he stays with us. Hoiberg in midfield, and I'm gonna keep Endombele just because um, I, I feel like he can he can still succeed. Uh, in the team there, I put Skip because hopefully Skip will come back and 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 play alongside Ho Hoiberg um, with Endombele a little a little further ahead. I feel like Hoiberg's only missing somebody else who can do the same simple stuff that he does intelligent simple stuff not just sideways passing backwards passing someone who can track a player back tackle the ball pass it to somebody who's actually open 
Um, and then Ndombele would be that player that's open. I also put on our list, I want uh, special consideration to Ward Prowse. I feel like we need a central midfielder who brings a little bit more, uh, can play a little deeper, and is also a uh, set, piece, set piece specialist. We definitely need someone that can, you know, take a free kick, a real free kick. <laughs> um, and then I, I stayed with our front free that we have, um, probably our best current front free, other than, you know, if Bale plays well, which he probably won't be here next season. Uh, you know, you can't hate Mora, can't hate Kane, can't hate Son. They're just the players. If we are going to succeed to go forward, we need we need those players. Okay, great, very good team. Um, again, if I can just give some comments, there, Loris. Uh, I'm not sure what you've seen in Loris to keep him on there. But that, again, <laughs> my my, my your team, I, you know, I already kept him because team. I feel like uh, a real centre back like Scrinio or or um, who was the other player I put? I put Jose. What was his name? Jose Maria Jimenez from Atletico. He's probably oh, going to cost I 60, I couldn't 70 spell the name, so I didn't put that on there. But, okay, yeah. Yeah. but he's, a, he's a top centre-back. Yeah, he's a centre-back. He's yeah. a screenier centre-back. That's going to yeah. be 60, 70 million. I don't think we're going to have much more money to spend beyond that. I mean, if I just carry on, then we go to Cam and Steve to comment on it. I think the cent- midfield looks very, other than on Dembele, it's very like water carrier type. We're just defensive type. No, I don't see much creativity there. And if Ndombele is not performing... Then there's no creativity. Mm. That's my only comment. But other than that, I think it's a but good team. I really other do. Than that, like I would say Lo Celso would come in when Ndombele is not, okay. yeah. not head in form. I mean, my it's comment is you know what I'm going to say. Does everyone know what I'm going to say? You could say, Where's Gareth Bale? I'm going to say, What the hell is Ndombele doing there? I mean, if you yeah. think what you could get. If your could team. Get, if we could, I mean, we, we're, we've got a problem here, haven't we, as, as a team? And that problem is the fact that Barcelona are going to heading towards bankruptcy because they seem to be the only team who really rate Ndombele and are willing to pay big big money for him and actually came in for him. And if, you could, if you could recoup 50, 55 million for Ndombele and t- his money that you've got, basically, maybe you can't get a Grealish, but maybe that would have paid for Dybala and uh, Lo Celso, Dybala there behind those two if we didn't get Grealish. Um, pretty okay. special, wouldn't you think that, Jem? Yeah, absolutely. would you trade? I ask you, would you trade in Dombele for Dybala in your team? Absolutely. Well, that's that's yeah. just that's <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I would. I don't, think that's I don't know how realistic it is. <laughs> if you don't, you need to be driven to the nearest insane in, in <laughs> madhouse and just locked up forever. But I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the talk out there, Jam, is that Dybala is is going to be you know he's already on the transfer list. He's on the market, yeah. Um, and they're looking at twenty five, twenty seven million for Dybala. It's his we image paid. rights is the issue, isn't it? His image rights is the cause of the problem last well, time. I mean, Ndombele's on 250000 a week at Spurs. Um, same as Harry Kane. Uh, we paid $62 million for him. Uh, we have 200000 a week being saved plus for Bell when he goes back. Uh, if we've got Delhi's on 150000 I believe. I don't know what Doherty's on, um, which we haven't spoken about. But if we added I mean, all that he's together... Paying, he's paying us to play. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. We did all I mean, that together. You know, that's 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 some good change in your back pocket to attract players because the players are more interested in what they're getting rather than what the fee is. Yeah. Right. Now, I just wanted to before we sort of close off. That's really good. I wanted to discuss a couple of other issues with you guys, Spurs related, to get your thoughts. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the interview by Gareth Bale, where he said that only was ever going to come for one season, and it was to get fit for the Euros and all that. What do you think about that, Steve? And then I'll come to the other guys. Do you think, even if he felt it, do you think he should have said it in public? Absolutely not. I feel disappointed. Um, and I think quite a few Spurs fans will be disappointed. You know, there's sentimentality about um, Bale, which um, Kamal has in spades, doesn't he? Um, yeah. You know, we remember him running the whole length of the field, scoring three goals um, against, I think, into Milan, don't we? That's, that's mm-hmm. our memory of him. He's not come anywhere near that. No. Um, I, I think that was probably his his view all along. Um, or is he saying it because he hasn't been given the run in the team he thought he was going to get? I don't know. But you'd you'd, you'd shut up when you you wouldn't say anything. But, yeah. You know, Bale's gone onto the golf course and yeah. said golf comes before Real Madrid, hasn't he? I mean, come on, he's yeah. he's got some form in that sort of way, and he doesn't care. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to work work again in his life, does he? No. He can just I mean, wander around the golf course and and grow yeah. his hair, you know. I mean, Cam, uh, even if he thought that, he's pretty he's a bit of an idiot to actually say it in public, isn't he? 
I think there's a lot more going on behind the scenes, isn't there? There's two things here. One is that yes, I agree with you. I, yeah, I am yeah. answering. I agree. I agree with uh, some of what Steve says. Of course, it's hurtful for Spurs fans take, if it's taken in that context. But two things. One is the honesty is important because it helps us look forward. Thirdly, it puts Real Madrid on notice who are now crapping their own load because they don't want him back at that six hundred thousand, at six hundred and fifty thousand pounds a week that he is earning over there, which basically stops their rebuild so that puts them on notice that you must they're going to have to sort this out so they'll yeah. probably come back to spurs and offer them back at a much cheaper rate it also makes it very clear that um daniel levy will not bring him back on the same terms that he's already and this is probably where it's all coming from that he got this year so i think a lot of it is positioning and jockeying i wouldn't read too much into it but what it does do helps us focus the mind that there is money out there that Spurs are spending that can be refocused on other players. And if the Bell, because um, let's face it, this is all mind games. Um, and I do feel that Bell's got some uh, grievances against Mourinho because he could have been played a lot more and he wasn't played at critical times when we needed him. And specifically, the first, everyone will go back to the game um, against Dinamo Zagreb. The fact that he never even he got on the pitch at about 70th minute, he had a good chance to win it right at the end. Uh, the keeper pulled off a good save. But, I mean, you're not playing your, your, your match-winning player. Then, uh, you know, I think that that in itself was probably the turning point. Once we got knocked out of the Europa League, it sort of lost its tarnish and its polish. And I'm not surprised with what he said. Uh, Jam, your thoughts on it? I think you're on mute, you're Jam. On mute. Sorry about that. Uh, so, yeah, the question posed was, uh, you know, whether he should have said it. He's he's probably, you know, an idiot for saying it. But, I, I mean, I understand where he's coming from as a person. He's been pretty open and expressive and un, unrestrained. He, he doesn't have anything to lose. Any one of you guys, if you had the option to continue, you know, playing somewhere you enjoy having playing football, you know, he's still earning whatever money he's getting. He's obviously going back to Madrid. He's Madrid's player. He was only on a contract for one year. Why, why wouldn't he be saying that? I totally mm -hmm. understand. I think, that. no, but the issue, I think I, you're missing the issue. I, I you totally missed the issue, issue. there. Hold on, Jam. He's hurting us as fans. But... but you missed the issue there. He said the only reason for coming back was getting fit for the Euros. He, he should have said the reason for coming back was to help Spurs get to top four and win a trophy. But he never once said that. He never once exactly. Said that. That's exactly Why? my point. But that was never the plan. Exactly that, was the a, point. that was never his intentions as a person. You know, so his what? intentions uh, as so a he's, person. So he's a fraud, basically. Isn't he? Can no, his intentions well, as a person were very clear at the beginning when he joined. He said, "I want so to, let me put this to you. play with Wales." Hold on a second, Jam. So basically, his country comes before before his club. Hold on. So you're right. saying Daniel Levy is paying him two hundred thousand pounds a week so he can get fit for the Euros and do well for Wales? Is that what you're saying? No, no Daniel Levy paying two hundred thousand pounds a week so he can sell bail shirts again. Yeah, I can be very clear about one thing. I just bought one, by the way. I can be very clear about one <laughs> thing. Here. He said this after we've been knocked out of the Euros, after top four hopes have gone. After no, they're not gone. We're three points off top four. Yeah. With, uh, we're three points off top four. No, uh, Steve, are we going to make top four? No, whether you think we will or not, but they're not gone. Well, no, mathem okay. mathematically we can. But, we can. You know. We've got okay, an so easier... I think we could probably be relegated. I don't know. We've Maybe got an easier run in, Cam. We've got an easier run in than a lot of the other teams. So it's not gone. I will just so make one final point on this. It okay. all comes after the fiasco that Mourinho landed us in in, uh, in Zagreb. In Zagreb, we went in with the two, never had an England team um, uh, ever in our history of Tottenham gone into a second round quarterfinal game two leg, two nil up and lost the game. And that knocked the sales out of it. And I think that that was what he came for very clearly to win the Europa League and to help Spurs get a trophy. I don't and think I, that I, has that I think that, you know, I, I have no problems with what you said. It gives some clarity. I'm sorry, Bell, well, Bell's I think that's like too much. Champions count. leagues. I don't think he cares about winning the Europa League. No, I just think Kamal he is too, came you, you, he's to, too to, embedded in the bromance with. Yeah, um, he's Bale. he's here to oh. get fit. He's here to play football if he can, and he's here to collect his paycheck at the end of the week. In, in on top of that paycheck, he's getting another paycheck for Real Madrid. He do, he's he is so done with football. Yeah, but the whole even, thing is even he... with all that. He, was his was his loan still a failure? I mean, he's got over mm. ten goals this season. Yeah, yeah most of them in the Europa League. 
Yeah. It's still. I, I said as soon as he came, I said if he can score ten goals this season, it was a decent. It was a decent. I don't. Like, I don't care how you guys dress it up or do it. He's been a failure since he came back. It has here. been a failure. No. So, so would you want him for another goals, season? If we get another five and he gets us top four and we wins us the cup, then he's not a failure. Then he's not a failure. Then he's good. Why didn't he say that though? Why didn't he say that I'm here to help you get top four and win a trophy? Why is he saying I'm here to get fit for the Euros? You've got to admit, Kamal, that was. He was that, just got. He was at the bloody Euro. He was at the yeah. Euro. No, no, no. News conference for Wales. Also, yeah, he why wouldn't he? A press conference for Wales. That would be. Uh, he didn't need to say be... anything. He no, said the whole point of coming back. Anyway, anyway, what's your sort of question was posed to him? <laughs> I would say. Okay. The next question is: Do you think Enoch are going to sell up, or any option, or any chance of them actually selling up and selling Tottenham to somebody else? Well, it, I would like to start with that. First. I'd like to start off with that. Uh, oh, Steve's been playing the uh, lottery every week, hoping to win a billion pounds so he can buy the club. And he promised me I'd get a box there. Um, <laughs> don't forget that. Um, I, th- I think that the best thing that right now, I, my, my problem is with the, with where we stand now, with, uh, what COVID has done has really, really uh, given us the have-nots and the haves. So Abramovich probably made more money out of it. They don't care. They've got enough money. FIFA fair play rules are about to be scrapped and thrown out of the window, which means City are never going to be poor, whatever happens, because they've got the richest backers on the planet. Liverpool probably do not have the richest backers on the planet because they are actually business people. Um, Spurs is being run as a business, which is all going to be going out. So we're going to end up with maybe two, three, four teams that have got so much money, whereas everybody else has got absolutely nothing. If that means that the only way we're going to get to the next level is by somebody coming in with a couple of spare billions, maybe Jeff Bezos might buy yeah, us or whatever, then, um, then yeah, I'm all for it. I'm sorry. I'm all for it. Steve? Um, Any chance of Enix selling? I, I, I don't know. They, if, they, if they think it's um, a good business decision, then they will do it because primarily they're a business. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, if you look at long-term revenue streams, um, if we can fill that stadium, if we can get regular European football, not a, a really Champions League, then it is a cash cow, isn't it? It is mm. something you can gain a continuous income from. And I, I don't think Enoch will do anything rashly. They mm. will see how the land lies. And I think maybe they'll look at it in a couple of years' time when things have settled. But I don't think there's anything going to change in the very near future. But Steve, 20 years of Enoch, what have we won? Um, they're all running it. They've been running it as a business. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, let's well, come to. I want to hear what uh, Jam has to think about Enoch and whether he thinks there's any hope of them selling or not. I feel like the only hope of them selling, as my dad said, would be if a huge major corporation like Google or Amazon were to come in and take it, where they have, you know, the resources or, or some chic or shake or something. It's, you know, I don't know. That's not going to happen. And, they, and, they, don't you know, a, they don't want to be associated with a single brand. They exactly. won't do it. So it's yeah. just not going to happen. Well, um, they're, they're, and, and I bet if they did, you know, they would still just remain with Daniel Levy in charge of the club. You know, a chairman no, who's I mean, been there for 20 plus years. Yeah. I mean, just, going, back to what, him in there. going back to what Cam said, if Steve had been the CEO of a company for 20 years and then met their sales target once in 20 years, Steve wouldn't be in a job. So it, I don't understand how Daniel Levy is still in a job. It's a total but, failure, as Cam says. One, no, no, let me finish. Money. Let me finish. One trophy in 20 years is failure. Somebody has to take the can for that. Football is different. We know that. But no, football is measured on success. How many Champions Leagues, how many titles, how many cups? They haven't won anything. I, I've, I've still got time for Levy because of delivering that new stadium. To deliver a new stadium is an awesome, difficult task. And, you know, we were talking about... And it takes... So let me, let me, let me when, ask you... When, when, when Terry Venables were there, we were talking about a new Spurs stadium. Let me, talk, let me ask you a question, Steve. If I gave you the option of having a new stadium or winning the title and winning the Champions League, what would you take? I would take the stadium because that gives you a platform <laughs> and the foundations to get those other things. A one-off firework display uh, in a stadium that holds 35,000 rather than building up a business that can get a revenue stream in to mean that you can compete on a regular basis year in year out I'd, I'd trade for that but that would be a good point if the if the youth owners were prepared to put money into the team and buy players they're not prepared to do that well we, I mean, just to round up this we paid 62 million player, pounds for a player well that's craziness we also have some some personality issues as well not every corporation acts um um 
sensibly you know, possibly at the end of the day, yeah. and sometimes they make they make the bad decisions, and that was a terrible decision. Okay, can I just add there is there is a plan B. I was just to wind this up for you. I wanted to just to see something I read on the internet. One guy was saying, and I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. You think Pochettino has gone to um, uh, PSG? Uh, if we could ship a few more players over there and slowly change their their <laughs> head into a cockerel over a period of time, and take the if you move the P and the S to the front and take off the G and put a U R in there over about a couple of years, we'd have start winning some trophies. <laughs> what do you think? What, yeah, what, good what, idea. What, I like that one. What crowds? What crowds do PSG get? I don't know, but we might start winning them. Maybe it's not, it's ship not, over it's Harry Kane. It's not in the blood like it is here. They all get twelve thousand. And for a very big European game, they'll get 40. There isn't the history there. There isn't. Okay. Okay, guys. Listen, last point I want to bring. I know we've gone on really long time. We don't normally do videos this long, but I want to have one last point. Forget about Enig and all the managers, all that. Is it the mentality of the players that we have are just not winners? Look at Arsenal. They finished 10th, 11th. They still won an FA Cup. They've got the mentality. Is that the issue here, Cam? I still probably win the Europa League without a doubt this year. I would think I'd put them as favourites now that we've got out of the way. Um, and I think that you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, um, the mentality does come from the players, but it also comes from the manager. And I think that this manager in particular um, doesn't have the players that he demands to be able to win stuff. I think Mourinho is the kind of player who says, give me this much money, let me have these players, and I'll take you to where I can. And what he did with Man United, he said, this is as far as I can take him. But he did manage to win something. I think we're more a team probably suited to uh, Solskjaer, who plays well, does good, but probably will end up winning absolutely nothing, just like his performance in the FA Cup. And that is the mentality. Because Man United summed it up for me, with that 3-0 defeat against Leicester in a very important game when there's probably the best chance of winning a trophy. Um, don't have the mentality and neither do Spurs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jam, do we have the right mentality or not? Um, as, as the players in the team, no, they don't. They don't have any, they don't know how to win. They don't know how to close a game out. They don't know how to beat, you know, uh, West Ham when you're 3-0 up in the 85th minute. It's not a team that's going to win the league. And these are the same players who have been there again and again and, um, you know, collapse at the final hurdle. hurdle. Mm. And yeah. it's, it's it, I, I don't know where it comes from, why it's ingrained so so deeply. Um, the club, yeah. and Steve, it's just, you seem to take yeah. good players from other teams. When they come to Tottenham, they just turn into failures. I mean, what is it? Is it something in the water or something or what? It must be, mustn't it? Um, but it's, we're, we're a laughing stock, aren't we? We're, yeah. it's, it's become a new uh, a new phrase. Oh, they're a bit spursy. Spurs that's yeah. you know that's where we are. Can I make one final point about of uh, course you can. transfers as well? Is that the the balancing act we have to make is we can't just say you sell Son and Kane and use the money to get new good players, because of course some of those players will only want to come if Son and Kane are there or a exactly. combination of them there. Yeah. So we actually yeah. start to reduce our gene pool, if you like. Yeah. by selling them in the first place. I haven't got an answer to that, by the way. Mm. It's just that we need to be conscious of that. Maybe sign them before you tell before they do leave and don't tell them. That may be a way. But I personally wouldn't hold back Son or Kane to leave. Actually, no. I, I, actually I actually, I know this, you guys are going to hate me for this, but I actually encourage Harry Kane to leave. Find a club where his talents are going to be rewarded and he's actually going to win things. Because he's wasting his time at Tottenham. I really do think that. Yeah. You know, he's a great player, probably one of the best strikers in the world, one of the two, three. Why should he waste his time at a team that's like 10th, can't even beat Zag Dinamo Zagreb away? Come on, he's better than that. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think the one thing that we need to recognise why we've not got a winning mentality, we do have some kind of mentality, which is a consistently losing mentality, as Jam yeah. said. Yeah. Our inability, uh, uh, we have the absolutely, one of the only teams in the Premier League who year in, year out have the fantastic ability of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory every single time. I mean, we're, we're consistent at it. We've done it well. And if there was an award and a cup for that, we'd win it every year. But one thing I'd like, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot in this podcast. I don't normally talk a lot. I let the other guys talk. But one thing I'd like to say is what has been the consistent over the last 20 years? So we've had like 15 managers. We've had hundreds of players. What's the only thing that's been consistent? It's Enoch. That's the only consistent thing across those 20 years. That just tells its own story. Yeah. Okay, guys, listen, let's, uh, let's wrap it up there. Thanks, to everybody, for listening to our Spurs 9501 podcast. 
uh, thank all our viewers watching on YouTube. I'm going to give each of the guys one final say before we leave. Um, Cam, let's come to you first. Your final thoughts before we leave? My final thoughts are that uh, um, we really need to consider where, where this team is going, whether we're, what it's going to look like next year. But I'm sure it will look nothing like what it is right now. And I'm sure that either Mourinho, if he stays, will demand big changes. If he goes, that will mean big changes. Plus, also, um, we are doing a fundraising to get Steve a, a personal barber so he can get his hair cut for the next podcast. So, Thank anyone you. who wants to chip in, please yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And listen, everybody, put your likes, comments, and subscribe. Uh, Jam, let me come to you now. Final thought? Final thought. Um, a, a lot of bad things can be, always be led back to ENIC, but under their, their leadership, we're within 90 minutes of, uh, of the biggest cup competition in football. And we, we were that close. So... <laughs> We're not still that far away. I think you know, that was despite not, them, not because of them. But it anyway. has a little bit, yes. But a little, yeah. But, yeah no, the, so years, <laughs> the years leading up to that, you know, it didn't just happen overnight getting to the Champions League right. final. There was a good five, six years leading up to that point, starting with Harry Redknapp's appointment. But didn't M- M- Sissoko sum up Spurs' mentality? When he the game really did. What, in one minute, a penalty? Minute. Yeah. That's the point pointing over there saying, hit the ball here so I can give yeah. away a penalty. Yeah, it was the yeah, yeah, most Spurs moment. Tottenham, we can't be here. Please hit It was a winnable match. Steve, I mean... I keep think talking about Enig. I'm really sorry, but any company that can sack Martin Yol at, at, at half time and the fans knew about it before Martin Yol did, this disgusting. Yeah, it's disgusting. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, there's lots of disgusting employers out there. I imagine we've all uh, we've all come across them in our lives. Uh, in terms of the future, I think we do need to to be realistic about where we sit in the football hierarchy, and that may mean looking at looking at the championship for players, looking at lower leagues elsewhere, not always going going for potential, not always going for the big name signing who's 32 or 35 or something like that. We need we need some youngsters. And we did that with Bale. We gambled. And up until Ali lost all of his form, we, we, we gambled with him as well. And it was good to see um, Skip in Jam's team. And let's bring some players through. Let's see some players from the youth setup who get through to the first team. Other teams do it. I'm, I'm very, very, um, I really admire the way Leicester managed to, on, on a shoestring budget compared to us, to get what appears to be extremely competent, hungry, speedy, young, athletic players. And they look, they really do look the finished deal. Um, mm-hmm. And we need to, need to sort of copy that model rather than the Barcelona or Real Madrid model, I'm afraid. I think so. Well said. Thank you very much to everybody. It's goodbye from Ray in London, a depressed Ray, really, because I can't see any way forward for this team. I'm sorry, but Steve? Yeah, I'm looking forward to see the uh, second half of the England game against San Marino. OK, and we'll Jim? I've got to go now. <laughs> uh, goodbye from Connecticut here. Um, you know, next season's our, our season, right? You say that every season, don't you? <laughs> don't, don't we it's all? Not this, season's not over. this season's not over. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cam, final Cam, word to Cam you, mate. Sun, very sunny Florida. Well into the 80 degrees oh, here. Uh, it's too hot. But um, thanks for getting us all hot under the collar too, Ray. But uh, come on, you Spurs. Come on, come you, on you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. You've been listening to the Spurs 9501 podcast. Stay in touch, continue the debate, and let us know what you want to discuss by finding us on YouTube. Tune in after the next match day for more insight. Thanks for listening.